Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. I am Martina Lilly and today is a massive video as I'm sure you can tell from the time duration of it. So grab a snack and a coffee and settle on in. Uh, we are going to be talking about all of my mid-year faves and regrets. So hopefully that sounds interesting to you guys. If it does, go ahead and do the youtube things, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell and let's get into it. You know we have to do the info slash disclaimers little section. All right, hang in there with me for like 30 seconds. Quickly, timestamps in case you're only interested in certain parts are in the description box. There will also be, I won't be able to link everything, but there will be a link to shop this video, like my faves of this video. I'm not going to link my regrets because of obvious reasons, but uh, there will be a link to shop all of my faves. And if you click on that link, it'll take you to shop my shelf. And then if you click on the product, it should take you to hopefully the correct location for yourself, should you wish to shop through them. Now those links are affiliate links. So if you do use them, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This is completely my own opinion. We may disagree. You may love something I hate. I may hate something you love, vice versa. It's all good. We can have different opinions around here because it's always going to work differently for different people's preferences, opinions, and just like reactions to skin, you know, it's science. We will do my makeup loves or faves and then my makeup regrets. If you're wondering why I call it regrets, it's because I don't like to call them makeup fails or makeup hates because just because I don't particularly like a makeup product doesn't mean that you necessarily might not. It just doesn't work for me for some reason or another. There's quite a few makeup products that don't, I don't really vibe with that I know are like massive favorites throughout the industry. So I just call it a regret because I just regret that maybe it doesn't work for me to be honest with you. <laughs> All right, let's get started, shall we? Makeup favorites first and uh, strap on in because we've got a, we've got a fair few. I am gonna go through this very quickly, okay? It's gonna be a power one. Uh, Victoria Beckham Augustina's Cross uh, Cross Augustina's Beta Original Priming Moisturizer. Oh, you know what I haven't done as well is say this makeup look is a full face of makeup favorites. So favorites that I mentioned in this video and it will be coming on my channel shortly if it's not up already. Okay, so keep an eye out for this. Um, but I'm actually wearing these two primers I'm about to talk about on this look today. So the Original Priming Moisturizer from Victoria Beckham. I love this. It's just a really, really good quality moisturizing primer. It really is. So when I'm wearing more of like a matte or natural finish foundation and I want something a little bit more hydrating underneath that to kind of like lift the foundation um, or just not make the foundation so drying, this is what I use. It's glorious. I love it. And then this KVD pore smoothing primer is so good. I don't find this to be like the best pore smoothing primer. Like I think the Tarte pore smoothing primer is better, but I love this one because it has this slight tack to it and you can wear it all over the face and it kind of does smooth the whole canvas of your face, but the slight tack to it, it's almost like the Milk Hydro Grip Primer, but not as tacky and it just like your foundation adheres to it and sticks to it and just wears impeccably throughout the entire day. So I really love that. The other thing that I forgot to say is that these are products that I've all purchased this year. They may not have been released this year. They may be like slightly older products or something, but these are just all things that I have tried this year, but mostly all of these are releases from this year. All right, let's do foundation. An older foundation that I only just tried this year was the NARS Sheer Glow. This is the shade Mont Blanc. I have a full face of NARS like brand review on my channel if you're interested in in-depth thoughts. I love this. I love this so, so much. I think this is very similar to the Light Reflecting Foundation, except it's not as hydrating and it's a little bit more full coverage, but I love it. I think it's glorious. The YSL All Hours Foundation. It is what I am wearing on my face today. And I really love this. I loved the original version of this. They've reformulated it. And the reformulation is actually better in my opinion. I love it. It's not as matte as the original, but still matte. So if you don't like matte coverage, matte, sorry, finished foundations, you won't like this. But it is also very, very full coverage, but still it's so thin and lightweight on the skin that it's still quite natural. I mean, it looks like you're wearing makeup because it is full coverage, but it's still very, very natural and skin-like and it's very long wearing. Love, absolutely love. The Ellis Fast Foundation, wow. This brand never gets any hype, it's ridiculous, but it is so good. It is such a natural skin-like finish. It is a light coverage foundation, slight, I would say 
t dipping one toe into medium coverage if you build it up but it is just this beautiful like natural finish to the skin it makes your skin just look like your skin but better very lightweight and wears impeccably absolutely delightful good summer foundation in my mind actually great summer foundation but the one that takes the cake for me this year is the KVD Good Apple Serum Foundation. I love the heck out of this foundation. It is one of the best foundations I have ever tried. It's right up there with the NARS Light Reflecting for me. It might even pip the NARS Light Reflecting for me. That's how much I love this. I cannot get enough of it. It's the perfect combination of coverage, skin-like, lightweight, well-wearing, smoothing. I, it's got everything I want to it. It really does. There is also a powder foundation that I have been loving this year and it is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Matte Velvet Powder Foundation. Um, I did do a video of me just using this as like the foundation on its own and I've also used videos where I use this as like a bit of a setting powder. Very beautiful. Very full coverage. Like when you just wear this as your foundation alone, it is so full coverage. It's insane. I was not expecting to like it on its own. I used to only ever wear powder foundations back in the day, like I'm talking when I was like, you know, young 20s, late 18s, that kind of a thing. Um, but I really not done it in a very long time. And so I wasn't expecting to love this, but wow, it was smoothing on the skin. It was full coverage and it wore really well. And I just, even as a setting powder, lightly dusted over the face, beautiful. It's really, this is a good product. Color correctors. So Natasha Denona High Glam Color Corrector in C1. It's the color corrector I'm also wearing today. Really beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love the shade of this. I love that she came out with like a full shade range of this. It's very lightweight under the eyes. Just, I, I love it. I love it. It looks great. It really does the job. And then also I tried the Tarte CC Colored Clay Corrector, and this is also very, very lovely. If you love the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Vanish Color Corrector, you will really like this one. It's so similar. Not exactly similar, but so similar. Very lightweight and hydrating on the under eyes, and I really, really like it. I also find that shade of this one is very similar to shade one in the Charlotte Tilbury. Concealers. Tom Ford Soft Matte Traceless Concealer so good. I have zero C bare. I did a full review of this on my channel as well. Really, really good concealer. It is a medium coverage. So on my under eyes, it's not like my all time fave unless I'm doing like a lighter coverage day. It does look lovely on the under eyes though. I just want a touch more coverage. Um, but I actually really love using this on the face, especially as like a spot concealer and stuff. But even on the under eyes, truly, if you, or if you only need a medium coverage concealer, it's really, really beautiful finish on the under eyes. The two obvious ones, Givenchy Prisme Libre Caring Concealer. I have this on my under eyes today. I absolutely adore this concealer. Like absolutely adore this concealer. The only thing I wish was it had about 30 to 40% more coverage. It's, but it does layer well enough for me that with a good color corrector underneath, I can get away with it. But I love how lightweight and smoothing and hydrating it is on the under eyes. It wears really well. Honestly, this is a brilliant, brilliant concealer. And my all time, this has become my number one favorite concealer, hands down. Like even over the Huda Beauty controversial, I know. Urban Decay Quickie Concealer. I have the shade 20 NN and it's just, I never expected to like this. I really did not expect to like this, but it is like everything you want. Like I personally like the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, for example, but it is similar to the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in the sense that it is super, super full coverage, really long wearing. But the things that people don't like about the Tarte um, Shape Tape Concealer, so like the drying of the under eyes, the heaviness, this is like combated. So this is like perfectly hydrating for my under eyes, but not in a greasy way or anything like that. It's like a very natural finish, very um, lightweight, thin formula. So it doesn't look heavy or cakey. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin. Oh, seriously, the best concealer, hands down. I love it so much. Powders. Uh, I tried the Make Beauty Translucent Powder. So you can tell I like this, but I do not like this all over my face. This is the powder I'm wearing on my under eyes today. I only like wearing this powder on my under eyes. If I wear it all over the face, it just, my skin, like it doesn't wear well enough over my face. I must have like too much oils or something in my skin. But on the under eyes, it is so smoothing, long wearing, and the shade of this adds the perfect level of coverage and brightening for my under eyes in particular. So I love it for them. Best setting powder that I have tried this year, hands down so far, is the Laura Mercier Blur. What is it called? Translucent Look. Translucent Loose Setting Powder Ultra Blur. 
so good. I actually got this. I wanted to try it for a while, but I was like holding out. But you guys kept saying like, no, 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 you need to try it. It's so, so good. And wowie, you were right. Because when you kind of swatch this, I don't know if it'll pick up on camera, but whenever I swatched this in store, it kind of like had such a luminosity to it. I don't think it'll pick up on camera that it almost seemed like a highlight. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to like that as a setting powder, but it doesn't translate like that on the skin. It's just like, it's like the original Laura Mercier setting powder, but not as drying on the skin or not as dry looking on the skin. Like, oh, this is so good and it is blurring. It is so good. It, I love it. It's brilliant. One that's absolutely ludicrous. I get it. <laughs> I get it. But, um, and I, look, I'm not telling you, None of this is saying to you to go and buy anything, okay? This is just my opinion and a bit of, you know, just a bit of makeup fun. And this is super expensive, but I, I really like it. <laughs> it's the Christian Louboutin powder. So what makes this so expensive is you have to buy the compact and the powder separately. And the compact is actually really expensive because it's honestly stunning. Like if you're a makeup luxury lover and one of the things that you love the most is the packaging then you'll you'll just like absolutely fawn over this like i do um and it's like hefty like it feels so luxury and so the packaging didn't uh disappoint me in any way but the product more importantly is also excellent so this is the shade 10 uh yeah 10n and I would recommend like getting the lighter shade if you're my skin tone and if you're paler oh, If you're like one or two shades paler than me, you'd be fine But any paler than that you probably don't have a shade for yourself So good absolutely beautiful. It's actually the powder that I'm wearing on my face today. It's very um, Smoothing it's long wearing. It's lovely. You can build this up to have a little bit of coverage to it as well It's really a beautiful powder. It truly is. Let's get into now like cream bronzers, powder bronzers, blushes, highlights, that kind of a thing. I'm going to get the only kind of like face palette, if you will, out of the way. This is the Chanel 957 Tendresse um, blush and eye palette. They call it a blush and eye palette. If you are pale like me, you can actually use this as a lovely bronzer as well, which is delightful. So this is like a full face palette for me. Um, I love this. And, you know, these got so hyped that like, and it took so long to be able to get this in Australia that when they first got released, I was like scrambling trying to get one. I couldn't get one anyway with like shipping to me. And I just didn't want to pay the like extra shipping from America to here at the time. And so by the time they actually did kind of get re or almost get released here, I was like, oh, I don't know. They've been so hyped. Like, am I even going to use this? I don't think it's going to be that good, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then saw it on my room was just like, had this weak moment and was like, screw it. I'm going to buy it. And I'm so glad I did. It's absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful this like baked formula it's like again just this beautiful glow to the skin without any adding any like texture or sparkle or anything to it it's just real healthy looking the shades are beautiful like mixed together or separately on their own they're absolutely beautiful and they're my kind of shades this highlighter is actually really lovely it's it's like a very subtle highlighter that doesn't enhance any texture and then you have this shade which you could absolutely use as a blush as well but also for me makes a really lovely like neutral tone bronzer and then if you want to use it over the eyes you can so i actually was pleasantly surprised at how much i really really did like this and also how much use i get out of it so happy days that it wasn't like overhyped and i hated it because <laughs> it was like a hundred and something dollars cream bronzers ys cream bronzer stick this is in the shade Motivate. It is the cream bronzer that I'm wearing on my face today. I absolutely love this. I think it is so underrated. I really, really do. I think the price point of this is brilliant for the quality. And I love, it's a true bronzer. So if you're looking for like that neutral, like kind of think makeup by Mario sculpting stick vibe, um, it's not going to do that. It really is like a true bronzer. And if you like the ABH cream bronzer, but you want it in a stick version, you will love this. I just really like it. The formula is, it, like I said, I'm wearing it today. It's very smoothing, undetectable on the skin. It blends out impeccably. A little goes a long way. Great shade range. Love. Absolutely love. This one, like the Victoria Beckham contour stick. Uh, yeah, I know. Don't hate me. Um, I have this shade Travertine and like, I know these are expensive for like no product at all, but I really like it. I really like it. It is absolutely such a beautiful bronzer and I really hope that what she actually does is repackage these into like a rare beauty size for example because I want more product than this little stick and I also just want like a thicker crayon but the product itself is 
like chef's kiss which is annoying because it's so expensive for like no product but it just blends itself and it's such a beautiful shade i love these and then just an honorable mention to the rare beauty new shade bright side because this is such a good like neutralish like sculpting shade so i have happy soul which is like my true bronzer shade and then this one which is more like my sculpt shade and i mean you just can't go past these rare beauty bronzer sticks they're so bloody good i just adore them so happy days powder bronzers that i've tried this year let's get the obvious one out of the way Pat McGrath Labs. This was in my Holy Grail video. I freaking love this bronzer so, 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 so much. It is incredible. And I really did kind of just be, I was skeptical picking this up. I was like, is it really going to be that wowing? Because I love those blushes. Like I love everything, Pat. You know I'm a Pat stan. But I was skeptical picking this up thinking it's just a bronzer. Like how good is it going to be? Oh God, she just nails her formulas. I'm telling you, because this is so beautiful. It is lightweight, undetectable but like this buildable pigment soft and blurring and long wearing and such a good shade and i freaking love it like every day i just want to use this it's really become my favorite honorable mentions i really enjoy the make beauty bronzer that is the bronzer that i'm wearing today this is more warm toned than the pad so i really love the pat kind of neutralness to its the neutralness to the shade that I got from the Pat bronzer is what I'm trying to spit out. If I want something a little bit more bronzy and warm toned, then this is the one that I, I really do like. I think the formula of this is impeccable. I'd love to see them expand their shade range to include some more neutral and uh, neutral tone kind of bronzer shades. But the formula of this is beautiful, very blurring on the skin. Two cream highlighters. Tarte Glow Tape, it's the cream highlighter I'm wearing on my face today. This is in the shade Pearl, absolutely beautiful. Very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Spotlight Wand, but I think better because it has this, it's not as metallic. It has a more translucent, natural finish to it. Like it really just looks like your skin, but better. So I really enjoy that. I think they haven't got the hype that they deserve, those glow tapes. I don't think anything can beat this liquid highlighter. This is the Gucci liquid highlighter. My lord, do I love this. Wow. This will be in my holy grail video. It's insane. And like, I saw this, I didn't realize this hasn't released in the US yet, which is weird, but I saw this around like for sale and I hadn't seen any reviews or anything because it wasn't for sale in the US pretty much. Oh. And it's expensive, it was like $90 or something. But when I tell you it is like the best highlighter ever, it really is. Like if I'm honest, it beats the Lisa Eldridge highlight. It really does. It is so natural and impeccable on the skin. Oh, it, I, like speechless about it. It's so good. The only thing that sucks about it is the packaging. Like give us a doe foot applicator, get rid of the dropper. Otherwise, every single thing about this um, highlighter is like utter perfection and I actually think this shade would suit every skin tone I really do because it's like translucent on the skin it just like melts into your skin and if there is anything that is like a glow from within that is just literally from you it's like this you just cannot tell it's a makeup product at all I obsessed obsessed powder highlights and I actually have Quite a few really um this is the natasha denona plexi glow it's the powder highlight i'm wearing on top of the tarte pearl glow tape and i love this i know people were disappointed because in the photos it looks like there's like pink and like green here and then this and it but it really does just come out kind of come out like translucenty goldish on the skin I love that personally. I really do. It's the perfect highlighter for me for when I am wearing a highlight, like say the Say Super Glowy Gel or the Tarte Glow Tape, where there really is no color to those. And I kind of want to keep that vibe and effect. I actually find this highlight is perfect for that because it, it just mimics that kind of color or like lack of color. And I love it. And like, it's non-texturizing, beautiful. I don't know. I, I feel like it's really good. Charlotte Tilbury Glow Glide in the shade Champagne Glow impeccable the best thing about this was that they advertise it as like a liquid highlight but in powder form and agreed it's the closest thing you will come to like a liquid highlight in powder form in my opinion absolutely gorgeous packaging is a little flimsy like it does kind of spin around which is weird but the actual product itself is like truly a chef's kiss product it's impeccable an oldie but a goodie that i tried nas capri this is phenomenal like absolutely phenomenal the perfect kind of powder highlight that again non-texturizing barely detectable not metallic or overly blinding but just like a really natural beautiful glow from within and i love the shade of it absolutely gorgeous and i think nars core staple products they don't get the hype that they still deserve to this day because they are older but damn they're good quality moving on to cream blushes 
you have heard me rave about the Rare Beauty cream blushes all year, okay? All year. I recently did a swatching all of my cream blushes video on my channel. So if you want to see like in-depth swatches and everything, go on there uh, or check out that video. These are Encourage and Virtue. Virtue is the one that started it all. I was an absolute hater of these because the first shade I ever tried from these was Bliss, which was the matte formula. And I don't like that formula, but this Do formula... Wowie, these are some of the best cream blushes I have ever tried. I love these shades, I want them all. The second I have enough money to probably buy all the shades, excluding the matte ones, I probably will. Yes, I'm that person. Uh, close, actually just tied for the Rare Beauty cream blushes, Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Blurring Blushes. I have Jubilee and Rosé and Brunch. Jubilee is actually a new one to my collection and that is the shade I am wearing on my face today. So good. Also, another one that I probably will pick up one or two more shades. I won't pick up the whole collection of these. There's a couple of bright ones I wouldn't get any use out of at all. But damn, these are a good formula. They're just like, they're super creamy. Like when you swatch these, you would think it's a formula I wouldn't like. Because they do swatch kind of really emollient. But because it has that, I think it's Upsolite technology in it. It kind of like goes on as the cream, but then quickly dries to like that powder finish, but it just melts into the skin, looks so smooth and impeccable, goes well over powder, and I just adore. I like absolutely adore these. Shout out as well to the new makeup by Mario Blush Fails. I have Perfect Pink and Barely Blushing. I have a review of these on my channel as well. I really like them. I really like his skin enhancer as well. So if you like that, again, you'll really like these. I just think they're a beautiful product. Um, they have a little bit of luminosity to them without being over the top about it. it. Goes really well over powder so they don't break up any of your like foundation or anything. Long wearing, slightly less pigmented. But again, like if you're someone that's like intimidated by cream blushes or new to cream blushes and you're nervous by them, try this formula. It's really beginner friendly and I just love the shades of them like this barely blushy one as well especially I use that the most it's just you know Mario did it again his products really are good powder blushes I will say these are I think these are my number one faves like if you had forced me to say what my absolute faves are it's these these are the new luminous or Giorgio, Giorgio Armani luminous silk blushes offbeat and shade 10 I don't actually know what the name of it so, or shade 30 and 10 I love these so much. I wore these in uh, my Holy Grail video that's either up or coming. I just love these. These are the most beautiful, like luminous silk is the perfect name for them as blushes. But if you know me, I don't like a shimmer or like shiny blush. Okay, I don't. I like my blushes to be really smoothing. And that's what these are. They're very smoothing without, but like glowy, but without any adding any texture or feeling like they're going to make me oily throughout the day or anything like that. They're just like this real healthy glow. I love the shades of both of these. And again, another blush formula that I kind of low key, high key want every single shade because it's really truly that good it really is another powder blush that just gets like the most amount of hype i think i've ever seen a blush get is the backstage dior rosy glow blushes so i have the traditional like you know pink viral shade that kylie jenner made famous um which is this one and i don't know if it's gonna focus it's not going to focus, but we're just going to pretend like we could see it. So I have, I started with this one and then when they released the new shades, I picked up Rosewood. I didn't pick up any of the other shades because I didn't really feel like I would get a lot of use out of them. And I love these. These are so good. Very similar to the Armani Luminous Silk in the finish type sense, but not as glowy. Um, but I just really like them. Uh, I'm actually wearing Rosewood over the top of Jubilee today. I really have come to like this one a lot more than this one just because this is more of an everyday blush shade for me. But it's just very smoothing on the skin, lovely, buildable, so I don't, you know, you don't put it on and look like a clown or anything. I don't know what it is about these, but I really like them. Like, I love reaching for them. Yeah, they just come to mind. Like, these and the Giorgio Armani ones come to, like, the forefront of my mind when I think of my powder blushes. They're just impeccable. An oldie, but seriously a goodie and like should still be getting hype every single day in my opinion is the MAC Glow Play blushes. This is in the shade Blush Please. The most perfect like nude blush for me and I love this like putty formula because it's kind of like a cream but also a powder and it looks good with like absolutely everything. Again smoothing on the skin, perfectly buildable, blurring everything I want in a blush and I know that these are quite an older product but they're so good for a reason like so good. These are actually so good. This is the first time I've actually ever tried 
these and wow 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 lastly the valentino blushes so i tried the shade two i don't know the name but this is the shade of it and it is absolutely beautiful um it has a little bit more of a shine to it i would say than the other blushes i've spoken about but again non-texturizing like doesn't have any glitter or anything to it so it's just like a luminous glow from within but i think this would be the most luminous one out of all of them shades absolutely beautiful like that kind of lovely pink um i really like this i hate the packaging i think for the price point of valentino they need to seriously up their packaging game because while it looks pretty it feels like it costs them five cents to make like it's a joke but the formula itself of the product is truly impeccable and again another formula that I absolutely am interested in picking up more shades in. Last complexion product and then we are going to move into eyes and stuff and I don't have much of them. So this is the Lisa Aldridge Seamless Skin Setting Spray. It's so it's just so white you can't see it like the branding in my in my lighting um i'm wearing this setting spray now it's absolutely beautiful it's lovely it's kind of like the charlotte tilbury one where i cannot tell you for the life of me why this is so good but it's so good it just really melts all of your products in to each other and makes them look like skin while not making you especially for my combo oily gals like doesn't make your skin greasy you know sometimes setting sprays you've got to be a little bit careful because if it's too hydrating of a setting spray it can actually cause your oiliness to just get too out of control this doesn't do that but does hydrate and just like melt everything in it's just like i said like the charlotte tilbury one where i cannot tell you why it's so good but it is so good this is gonna heavily disappoint you guys i am not going to include any eyeshadow palettes okay i am going to link both of my like ranking all of the palettes that I've tried so far videos this year like tried so far this year down below for you guys honestly they're all my favorites I think there's one there's one like regret that I will talk about maybe two regrets that I'll talk about in the regret section but everything that in those videos that I say I love when I tell you they're a favorite like a true favorite true love like like intensely love them they all are, so there's no point in me talking about them in this video because I love them all. Like, I'm just going to be sitting here for another hour talking about all the palettes that I love. I haven't tried very many new lip liner formulas, but these ones are really good. These are the Tower 28 lip liners. I have Fill Me In and Work of Art, which is basically Iconic Nude and Pillow Talk from Charlotte Tilbury, but in a much cheaper price point. And I never usually like pencil formulas like this, but this is actually a very creamy, beautiful formula. It's actually the lip liner I'm wearing today, the Work of Art one. Lovely, absolutely lovely, like would repurchase, absolutely gorgeous. And I didn't like the Rare Beauty lipsticks, but I love this Rare Beauty eye, uh, lip liner, sorry. I think it's absolutely beautiful. This is just shade Lively. This is just the most perfect, like, my lip color lip liner so i can really put it with like any single lip stick because it's just my lip sh shade if you will i don't know how to describe it but yeah i just really like this and also it's very long wearing very creamy beautiful like great lip liner my favorite lipstick i have tried this year has got to be lisa eldridge Le Pre. absolutely perfect like my perfect nude shade from her i've been waiting to find my perfect nude shade and i absolutely love it let's put some on now just very fuss free perfect intense love. I also love the Hourglass Unlocked Satin Lipsticks. These are brilliant. I have the shade Tide and Oasis. I've talked about these in a lot of videos. Really like them. I think they got a bit of hype. I haven't seen them get much hype since because, you know, once a product's been released for a week, apparently it's old around here. But <laughs> So this one is Tide and this one is Oasis. And they're just impeccable. They're like a really, they're my kind of a formula. If you know me and my like lip product preference, if you will. These are like perfect satin moisturizing or like hydrating lipstick products that are fuss free. Like I like to say, I like a lip product that you can put on in, an, in the dark and know that it's not all over your face. It's going to look good. doesn't dry your lips out. It's like you can eat lunch and feel secure knowing that it's not going to like flake away awkwardly and all that kind of stuff so that's what these are i love them i think the pigmentation is beautiful and the shades are stunning the only liquid lips i have ever tried that i absolutely love and adore is the urban decay vice bonds so good i have the shade textum and unbreakable and yes i know these came out quite a while ago but australia only got them this year okay <laughs> so we get, urban, we get some urban, urban Decay launches instantly and then others like a year later. It's real weird. Um, these do not budge. If you let these dry down, they do not budge. So that's Textum and then Unbreakable. 
like truly will you do not need to reapply them throughout the day you don't have to worry about them coming off awkwardly or anything like that i drink a lot of coffee which usually will break up any liquid lip but these do not they last through that but you just have to let them dry down they have an ever so soft tack to them when they do dry down so if that annoys you, you won't like them but it's very very soft but i just really appreciate how long wearing these are they don't make my lips look like butthole lips honestly the best liquid lip i've ever tried Period. The NARS Afterglow Sensual Lip Shines. You've, I don't think I've not used these. I think it's rare that I haven't used these in a video since I got them. I have Dolce Vita and Breathless and obsessed, absolutely obsessed with them. They're kind of like a tinted lip balm is probably more so what I would describe them as. So that one is Breathless, that one is Dolce Vita. Um, they're not as hydrating as a tinted lip balm, but they are hydrating. I don't know if that makes sense, but it does in my mind. <laughs> but I freaking love these. These are so perfect to any look. And again, because they're not as pigmented, they're very fuss free. Like you can apply them without looking in a mirror. They're not going to go all over your face. They are not long wearing in any way, shape or form. So you do need to reapply them quite consistently. I don't mind that um, throughout the day, as long as it's not going to be like an awkward wear away, I'm good with it. I'd rather have to reapply consistently than the awkward wear away. But I just love that these are hydrating and I love the shade. And I've just found like when I've got a more bold eye, which I typically do have a more bold eye just because I of my love of eyeshadow, these kind of like tinted soft lipsticks like this, I find really complement that kind of a look really well. So I haven't stopped using these. They're amazing. Lip glosses and lip balms that I have tried that I absolutely love and adore. Um, the NARS Afterglow, uh, what is this called? This is in Dolce Vita, the Afterglow Lip Shine. I don't know if you can still get these, but if you can, just this formula is amazing. Like absolutely amazing. It's kind of like the Tower 28 lip jellies but I actually think a little bit better a little bit lighter a little bit more lip oily but still long wearing beautiful shade I don't know if you can still get them but if you can highly 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 recommend this lip gloss has got to be like you know I've heard people say this and I was like mm, I don't know you guys but they weren't kidding this is the best lip gloss I've ever tried this is the Lisa Aldridge lip gloss in the shade Dancing Rose I love it. I love it. And I now have a cart full of like different shades of this. I mean, a lip gloss, a clear lip gloss is a clear lip gloss, but this is beautiful. It's again, this really amazing, impeccable combination of like lip oil, lip balm and lip gloss. So it's not too sticky. It's very, very hydrating on the lips. It has that extra like um, glassy, glossy look to it. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. It hands down, no word of a lie, is absolutely the best lip gloss I've ever tried. Also, shout out to the Dior lip oil. I know this has been a fave of people's forever, but I just tried it and I get it. I get the hype. It's really, really nice and hydrating, like a true lip oil, a true hydration. Doesn't have that fragrance taste or anything to it, at least from what I have experienced with it. And I really, really, really like it. So... Happy days. We made it. That is all of my makeup favorites. <sighs> Deep breaths. Now we're going to go into the makeup regrets. So with the regrets, the way I kind of go into these is it might, it's a regret in the sense that I like regret picking it up, but it might be in the sense of, I kind of knew I wasn't going to like it, picked it up anyway. And here we are. It's my own fault. Or it just might be now what I regret picking it up because the product didn't work for me. So like, I don't, actually regret picking it up I probably would have anyway but just the product doesn't work for me personally I guess so either which way anyway primer I picked up the Shiseido Synchro Skin Soft Blurring Primer based off Andrea Ali's recommendation she loves this primer she finds it really really smoothing and amazing on the skin and this isn't necessarily a bad primer at all it's just I don't know I don't find it does anything at all <laughs> like anything at all so in that respect, I, I'm just kind of like, I regret spending money on you because you kind of do nothing in my mind. Like it does not smooth pores in any way and it just doesn't really do anything. So it's not bad, but it's not good. It's just nothing. Foundations. <laughs> the MAC Studio Fix Pen. Boy, do I regret buying this. Boy, do I regret buying this. So if you saw the video, the title is like, this was a roll, get ready with me, this was a roller coaster or something like that. This pen, the formula is actually fine. Like, is it the best formula in the world? No, is it the worst? Absolutely not. Like formula wise is actually pretty decent. 
The problem with this is this is in the shade NC20 and I'll put some on my hand and as I talk, you'll notice what I'm talking about. This shade oxidizes or this foundation oxidizes. I think it's like five shades deeper. So it looks fine here, right? Like fine, but I will leave it here. You can even start to see it going orange. Now within a couple of minutes, this goes so orange. <laughs> that when I tried it, I literally turned like proper Oompa Loompa. I've since found a way to make it work in the sense that I mix in a bit of the LA Girl White Pro Pigment into it. And so it kind of like lightens this to the point where it almost looks really pale, but then because it oxidizes, it goes to like the right shade for me. So because the formula is actually fine for me, it's not my favorite, but it's fine. Um, it's just the oxidation. I you know, if I can make it work, I'll make it work. I spent my own money on it, right? The NARS Natural Radiant Foundation. Now, this is some people's like holy grail. And again, not a new product in any way. Just the first time I've tried it this year. I cannot get this to work for me. It just sits on my skin. It doesn't melt into my skin and become one with it. It just awkwardly sits on top of it in like this slippery, awkward mess. It is full coverage, but I find it's just way too drying on my skin. I find it looks really heavy, really cakey. It's just... Me and my skin, we ain't friends with this foundation. Anytime I've worn this, it truly makes my skin and my makeup look horrific. And same with this one, the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. I picked this up this year because this was in nearly every single person's makeup favorites. And I was like, okay, well, if that many people love it, I need to try it. I don't know what it is about this foundation in my skin, but I cannot get this foundation to work for me. It does not look good. It looks heavy cakey it's texturizing it emphasizes my pores it doesn't do anything good for my skin anytime again i want it it makes my skin look really bad i would much rather look like an oompa loompa with this formula because at least the formula looks pretty decent on my skin versus this one or this one because these make my skin look like real haggard and textured and old and it's just and settles in fine lines and it's cakey and it's not for me not for me, unfortunately. I don't even know if you can tell it. See how it's, it's still getting orange. <laughs> I'm trying to heap of color correctors this year. And some of these I just don't like because of formula, but a lot of these I just don't like because of the shade. Let's start with this one. This one got pretty hyped up on TikTok, I think. This is the Ola Enriksen um, Banana Bright under eye cream. Yeah, Banana Bright Plus Vitamin CC Stick in the shade Banana. And actually, I like the formula of this. I think, why do I do this to myself? I put it in a spot where I can't even show my hand. The formula is really nice, but it's just not the right color. They don't have the right color in these for me. So I'd like to see them extend their shade range and include like a pinky color because this looks really lovely on the under eyes, but the yellow just doesn't quite neutralize any of my under eye darkness. So while I like the formula, the shade's not perfect. Uh, same with this one, like the Givenchy Prisme Libre, Prisme Libre, <laughs> whatever, this color corrector from Givenchy. Um, this is in the shade Peach. They only released three shades, one peach, one purple, and one green. I don't know why they didn't release more. It's just too dark for me. Again, I can mix in like some white pigment with it and make it work, but I don't want to have to do that with this formula in particular because I really like the formula of this. I love the concealer and it's the same formula as the concealer, but it's just too dark for my under eyes. It just does not work to offset my darkness. It almost makes them darker and then I just kind of look bright orange under there. So I'm really disappointed. I knew that it was probably going to be too deep, but I just couldn't help myself from picking it up. But the actual formula, impeccable, just the shade, not so much for me. If you're like a medium to deeper skin tone, you'll probably really like that. Same with the Tarte Shape Tape. Uh, again, it's just too deep. This is peach. I think there is a light pink one of these and I knew I should have got it. And so my regret is actually not trusting my gut in getting the lighter one and getting the peach one. Just way too dark. This one's actually deeper than I think. It's kind of like deeper than the Givenchy, but in a different way because it's more like a, it does have a bit more tinge of pink to it, this one, than the Givenchy. But it's just, yeah, it's just way too dark on my under eyes. I do like the Givenchy and the Ola en Enriksen, sorry, formulas better. I think they're a lot nicer on the under eye in the sense that they're a bit lighter and more moisturizing. Um, this one is touch drying, but I do really, really like this. And if I ever see the lighter shade in an easy to get place, I'll probably pick it up. And then I guess two kind of, or three kind of drugstore ones that I tried. I had to try the e.l.f. color correctors. Everyone was raving about them. And again, I mean, not formula for this one. I don't mind the for the formula's fine, nothing to rave about, but like the shade, it's just so deep. So, so deep. And I think, I 
think there might be a lighter one in this, but honestly, I didn't love, and it's not because it's drugstore, I swear to God, I just didn't love the formula of this. It just wasn't, it was too drying and thick on my under eyes. That's right, as I'm blending this out on the back of my hand, that's what I'm remembering about it. Um, similar to the Tarte formula, but actually a little bit heavier than the Tarte formula. And then I picked up these Moira ones. Um, as well because I whenever I see color correctors I just want to try them so one's the shade 200 light and one's the shade 200 fair and one is too deep which is fine and the other is I think a little bit too light but I can mix them together and it makes these two are actually like shade wise quite good for me so um, the deeper one is 200 the lighter one is 100 but this formula is horrific <laughs> it's so bad it doesn't blend into the skin it reminds me of the valentino concealer formula where it just sits on top of the skin in like this greasy awkward slippery mess you know when you see like oil and water combined and the oil's just like sliding over the top of the water and not becoming one with it that's what this is like in that sense so yeah i hate the formula of these which is annoying because i really like the shades i feel like i'm like goldilocks with under eye color correctors Okay, let's talk about concealers. Let's just get this one over and done with. I freaking hate this concealer. This is the concealer I hate the most out of any concealer I think I have ever tried. Seriously. This is the Valentino concealer. Shade's fine. I got the shade LN2. So that's all fine. And packaging's cute. And I got this because I really like the foundation. But this sucks. First of all, it has basically no coverage to it whatsoever. If you want a light coverage concealer, you might like this, but it does nothing and you cannot build it up. You know, with like the Givenchy where it's like not solid coverage, but you can build it up to be pretty decent, especially with a color corrector. No, you've got no hope with this one. It's very, very lightweight. Um, there's no building this up. Also, this is like these Moira ones, like I was saying, where it's like, it doesn't melt into your under eye it doesn't melt into the skin it like awkwardly slips on sits on top of it and then just like slips around and so like within an hour you i would have like these bald patches where there's no longer any concealer because it would just like slip off even if i set it with powder and there would just be this like weird dark circle here and like horrible creased just wore horrifically it made my under eyes look like i was 170 years old horrible one that i also really <laughs> don't like. I really cannot figure out a way to make this concealer work as well, but I'd wear this over the Valentino. This is the Milk Fluid Concealer. I don't know if I've talked about this before. I can't remember when I got it, but I'm shouting it out because I officially decided that I hate it. This is the shade 4N Dramatic. It's a little bit light. That's fine. You know, I can make that work for me. I just, I know that some people count this as their holy grail, but I can't get it to work for me. A little bit in the sense of like the Valentino concealer where it doesn't like melt into my under eye nicely but it just ages me like it's drying it ages me it's settles in lines it like creases it, it's I just again I look like I'm 170 years old when I wear this I cannot figure it out I've tried mixing it with a heap of concealers and everything nothing works with it and I have decided that along with the Valentino honestly I hate these for me I hate them and I don't like to use that word I like to use regret but I hate them there's only been one powder I haven't liked oh, and did not realize it's broken and it just fell everywhere so there you go uh, let me just clean that up for a second this is the NARS what is this called NARS soft matte advanced perfecting powder in the shade cliff so a couple of reasons one I really don't this shade is like odd like I don't mind a brightening powder but this is like, see how bright that looks in the pan? That's how bright it comes out on the face. So it's just like, it's way too bright for me. It, it doesn't look natural on the skin. And then the powder itself is kind of like drying and sits on top of the skin. Like it's, it's not like a natural looking powder. It doesn't like melt into the skin for me. And then also it has coconut in it and it breaks me up real bad. Well, not breaks me up, but it gives me like that coconut rash that I get. And I, I can't really wear it. I also haven't heard anyone rave about that, so I'm guessing everyone else feels the same way, but who knows? You know, there's different strokes for different folks. Okay, Kosas. I hate this. <laughs> These two products right here are probably the most hated makeup products I have nearly ever tried. I can't think of another product that I have tried that has brought so much hatred to my heart. I really can't. Well, again, if you saw that video, it was like, get ready with me. This was a roller coaster. This was pretty much also the reason because when you blend this out on your hand, it looks so nice and you're like, oh, this is going to be great. And you kind of think of it like the Charlotte Tilbury um, Flawless Filter or like the Say Super Glowy Gel. And then you go to put it on as a primer or on the face as like a highlighter or whatever. 
and on the skin it like on the hand blended out it doesn't look like it has any glitter or flecks of glitter on it and then you put it on the face and it's like full of like chunks of glitter that sit in your pores they just sit in your pores and it is horrific and it just looks absolutely terrible also it is one of the most drying products i have ever put on my skin it is so drying like they just need to casually fade this product into the sunset because wow i've never come across someone yet who likes it if you like it no shade no hate but if you do like it can you tell me because i just it would be nice to know it has some friends i guess you know oh bad i have though caveat heard the deeper shades don't have the flex of glitter it's just the lighter shades so you know just one powder bronzer and it makes me angry that this is a regret so this is the mac um skin finish bronzer so don't get me wrong the actual just pure formula of this oh, probably up there like top two with pat mcgrath labs like the formula of this bronzer is stunning stunning truly airbrushed on the skin beautiful buildable bronzer lovely there's three things i don't like about it one the shade which is not necessarily its fault but i would like it to be a little bit more neutral if i could just be a little bit picky there okay and then secondly the smell i just got a whiff of it it smells like vomit <laughs> i'm not even kidding i'm not being like horrific i've never had a makeup product in my entire life that smells like this ever i don't know if they've put a fragrance in here they have to have of some sort because I've never smelled other unfragranced makeup products that smell like this, but it legit smells like vomit and you can smell it when you're wearing it and it gives me a headache. And then secondly, it, I don't know, I think it has coconut in it, but it, there's something in this and I'm not quite sure which ingredient it is, but there is something in this that breaks me out real bad, like really, really badly. So that's disappointing. So if it wasn't for the smell and the breakouts, I could get past the shade because I can make the shade work really nicely for me. It's just That's just me being nitpicky. But I can't get past, obviously, the breakouts, but I cannot get past the smell. It makes me feel sick. Cream blushes. Unfortunately, the Vive Sunset Blush Balm. This is the shade Pesca. And um, when I talked about this, I think I talked about it... I can't remember when I talked about this, but I said in a video one time, because I haven't really shown it on my channel apart from, I think maybe it was like a makeup reorganization video. And I said to you guys, oh, I haven't shown this because it sucks. And so many of you guys commented as well saying, yeah, it does suck, which is a shame. And it's because it just, it has no pigment to it. Like I've swatched it to the sense that you can actually like see the pigment here. But if I blend it out, it just kind of looks like the shade of that Make MAC pen. Oompa Loompa. Oompa Loompa foundation. Look how much it's blended out. It's basically not there anymore, right? So that's how it goes on the face and wears. And then it's also this like real greasy formula that just like under powder, over powder, doesn't matter. It just like lifts all of your makeup products underneath. And it's just like this real greasy formula. Look, it's gone. You can't even see it. It's just, it's such a shame, but these suck. Like I know it's a blush balm and like it's a liquid blush balm, but like, listen, Pat McGrath's New blushes, I know you're probably like, oh, you didn't put the Pat McGrath Labs blushes in your favourites. No, I didn't, because they're not my favourite. I love the shades. They're favourite shades, but the actual formula, not my favourite. Don't hate it. Don't love it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I enjoy it. It's fine. And they're a, they're a balm, right? They're a colour balm, and the whole description of them is kind of like this. But they, at least one, go well under powder and over powder have pigment to them that you can build up and wear lovely. You know what I mean? It's just not my personal preference of a blush over the ones that I mentioned. But this one just sucks. Sorry. And I love Vive, okay? I've done a couple of full face of these Vive's products. I really enjoy the brand. I really like Jamie Genevieve. I really want to try their new cream bronzers that they've just released. But that sucks. Another one is the Tarte Blush Tape in Peach. This sucks too. <laughs> This is a regret. I knew I shouldn't have bought this, to be honest with you, but I bloody did. This is like the Glowgasms from Charlotte Tilbury, except again, this one really has no pigment. Like, it looks like it there, but then once you've blended it out, where's it gone, friends? Where's it, where's it gone? It's gone completely. And it also is like the blush balm, like Vive wet seat. It's gone. Um, it is really like greasy and it's oily and it lifts like over powder under powder doesn't matter it lifts your foundation and everything and like i know the glowgasms with charlotte tilbury are not technically blushes right so you could be like well they're supposed to be like a highlighter because i kind of find that formula does it a little bit too but these ones are actually advertised as a blush right 
where? Where is the blush? And then it also just lifts my um, makeup and then my hair sticks to... Oh, just, oh, no. It's a nice. Some eyeshadows that I disliked. Uh, the MAC Unfiltered Nudes. It's, I just don't like it. I don't. I had a terrible experience with it. I will give it another go. Look, the metallics are fine. Nothing wowing or impressive or anything like that. Like, I think you're better off honestly buying Colourpop. <laughs> They're just fine. But, like, the mattes in here suck. And for the price point of this, I'm sorry, but the quality of these eyeshadows, regardless for the price point of this palette, they suck. I'm sorry if you like it. Again, it's not personal against you. It's just my opinion. And then this one, I just regret buying this. The quality of this is really lovely. I just regret buying it because had I thought about who I was as a person, I would have known that this should would have always been a regret. And it's the Tom Ford uh, Cherry Smoke Quad. You know what got me? The word cherry. Cherry is my favorite fruit, my favorite flavor. I love cherry. I'm obsessed with cherry. But do you know what I don't like? Red eyeshadow on me. Not a fan. Like, I'll do it every now and then, but it's not my go-to. It's very outside my comfort zone. So why did I buy a red quad? That's on me, okay? That's not on Tom. That's on me. So quality of this is, is just fine. It's not the cream formula and it's not the wet to dry formula or the dry wet formula. So the formula is just okay. Like it's lovely, you know, nothing to rave home about either, but also not terrible. But it's just this color story. Like I'm not gonna use this. What was I thinking? I'll keep it because I'm ridiculous and I love having a Tom Ford quad collection. Um, but the whole thing was like cherry smoke and I was just hooked in, in the packaging. And I'm, I'm, I understand you may roast me in the comments. These Victoria Beckham eyewear sticks, these are controversial to me, okay? So I purchased, um, what is this shade? Pecan and Oyster on my own, off my own back with my own dollars, okay? And I really like the shades. And so many people love these and have not had the same experience as me. But I hate these. Hate's probably, I don't hate, no, I, I regret purchasing these. I hate the concealers that I mentioned, the Milk and the Valentino and the Kosas. I, do, I don't hate these the same way. But that is Pecan and that is Oyster and they look lovely when you swatch them. But for the life of me, I cannot get these to blend out on my eye, especially Pecan. I just cannot, no matter what I do, what I do. If I prime my lids, if I don't prime my lids, if I moisturize quickly and then apply them, if I apply them directly and then quickly try and buff them out, try and use fingers, try and use brushes, whatever. I cannot get this to freaking blend out on my eye. It just, as soon as it goes on, it dries down and that's it. it. I can't move it. And then this one is fine. I can move this one around, but it just looks like chalk. Like it does not look like this. Like when I swatch it on the back of my hand, it looks lovely, but it does not look like that on the eye. And I cannot figure out why, but I will say, I was extremely blessed and Victoria Beckham sent me the entire eye crayons in PR. So I have all of the shades sitting there. And I have swatched them there on my Instagram. But I tried the other day Trench. So this is the light tan color. Cause I was like, you know what, YOLO. I was filming like one of my membership videos that will be coming eventually <laughs> whenever I can get myself together for it. And I was like, you know, I'm just gonna try this in the video because that's what the membership videos are about, right? Like just sitting down doing really long form makeup looks together and stuff. So I tried this one, which is, did I say it was Trench? Yeah. And this one worked perfectly. Like this one actually worked perfectly. I drew it on and then I left it and it like picked up a brush and it blended out perfectly and it looked lovely. So I don't, even when actually, even when I'm touching these, this feels really soft and emollient and this is like dry. Like I wish you could feel this through the screen. Like, I don't even know if you can tell. Okay, let's see. So this is um, trench lag, right? And then can you see that? Can you see the difference? Mm, I don't think I'm crazy. I think it really is those shades. Do I have a lot of lip products yet? Okay, let's just quickly get through these, okay? I think I've spoken about these before. I can't actually remember. The Make Beauty Lip Serum. So I have Magnetic Morph, which is kind of like a lip balm version of Fenty Beauty Morph Wives. Just by Fenty Beauty Morph Wives, it's better. And then this is Nude Nova, which is just a clear kind of lip balm from Make Beauty. Um, they're just not worth it. They disappear quickly off the lips, like so quickly off the lips that um, they're not on there long enough to be hydrating. They're also really thin formulas so that don't actually hydrate, they don't do anything. This one's not too bad. This one's, the Magnetic Morph is better than this one, but I just, I wouldn't go out of my way. The Rare Beauty Lip Oil is so disappointing to me because this is not a lip oil. This is a lip tint, okay? If you want a lip tint, go for gold. You'll love it, okay? But I wanted a lip oil. 
I don't like lip tints, they're not my vibe. And so you put this on, and again, it's like a lip oil for all of 15 seconds, and then it dries down to be a lip tint, and it's not hydrating in any way, shape, or form. So if you want a lip tint, you will love this. If you want a lip oil, like I do, I don't recommend. Clarins Lip Oil Formula, great. My one gripe is that, and I didn't notice this the first couple of times, but the last two times I've used this, I'm like, oh dear. I can taste the fragrance in this, like, badly. So, again, for those of you that are sensitive to fragrance like that, pick up the Dior one. I cannot taste any fragrance or anything in the Dior one, um, but I can in this one. But I do like the formula and I love the packaging. These little Makeup by Mario thingies. What are they called? The Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Colors. I don't know why he bothered with these, truly. These are just <sighs> less hydrating versions of the Moisture Glow Lip Serums. I, they go on more pigmented, but they don't last long enough to like, you're gonna get longer pigment out of the lip serums, the Moisture Glow Lip Serums, than you are out of these. These just wear away super quickly. Don't get me wrong, I love the shades and I actually don't mind them. Like they look lovely when you put them on, right? Like those shades are gorgeous. They look very natural on. They are hydrating, not as hydrating as the lip serums. The lip serums, you can wear like a proper lip balm. They're gorgeous. These are not like that, but they're not dehydrating. They just literally last all of about three minutes on the lips and then they're gone and they're done and that's it. And so I just don't see the point. Like, listen, I get it. The NARS, um, like afterglow lipstick things, they're not long wearing, but they're longer than that. Okay. And they're a lot more hydrating on the lips. So I just don't see the point when you can wear the moisture glow lip serums. Maybe the pigment isn't as strong but it's a lot more long wearing and hydrating. So you are actually getting more pigment because, you know, over time that kind of mats, you know? Rare Beauty Lipstick in Humble. Listen, beautiful shade. I just don't like it. It's very drying and it gives me butthole lips. Enough said. And this one, I love this shade though. This is the MAC Locked Kissed Kiss Ink in Vicious. Great shade, like great shade. Boof, boof but it doesn't do what it says it's gonna do. Okay, so that's the shade there and it's absolutely stunning, right? And it looks gorgeous on the lips. And if you don't want a red liquid lip <laughs> to last long time, like to last all day, sorry, and not, you know, fade away awkwardly and, you know, you know how liquid lips or like matte long wearing lips, they can like start to like crumble in here and it just doesn't look good and it's not easy to reapply or take off in the middle of the day then you don't want to wear them, right? And that's what this does. It's It advertises that it's 24 hour wear and it is not, okay? I have been searching high and low for a red liquid lipstick that does not budge at all or wear away at all, all day. And the closest I've gotten is the Urban, Urban Decay Vice Bonds. And this was not it, okay? I did a wear test on my stories ages ago, so. I mean, look, it's gone now, but I did do a wear test. I think I put it actually in my like lip roundup video that I did recently. Um, so love the shade, just not the, what, it doesn't do what it's advertised to do and that disappoints me because that's what I bought it for. Okay, if uh, you are here still watching, you deserve a pat on the back, a medal, and just like you're an absolute legend because this has to have been the longest video I think I have on my entire channel. So well done, you're a champ. Um, secondly, I hope you enjoyed it and it was helpful. And uh, let me know some of your faves and regrets. Why not? You've made it this far, you may as well tell me down below. And see, I've been filming for a ridiculously long time now and I just lose all common sense and civility. So here we go. You just get ADHD teams at this point. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, if you're watching to this point, you know you're a legend. I know I've said that, but I want to reiterate it because it's been a long one. I appreciate you guys and I hope you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world. And I will see you next time. Bye.